Let's learn the parts of the violin. I like to think of the violin like a person. So the violin has a belly or a top. It has a back. It has sides. These are called the ribs. And these are the corners here. You've got to be very careful with them. They're delicate. This purfling is actually inlaid. It's a piece of wood inlaid, unlike the beginner violin I showed that just had the purfling drawn on. This inlaid wood helps to support the violin in its weakest parts so that if something were to hit the corner, the purfling would stop the break. And you'll find a lot of older violins have breaks at the corner that have stopped on the purfling. You can definitely get that fixed. Here on the front, on the belly, we have the F holes. They're shaped like a fancy letter F. That's where the sound comes out. And right above these F hole circles up here is the spot where usually your violin sounds the best if you place the bow. It's called the sweet spot. We've got the bridge that holds up the strings. We've got the tail piece with the four fine tuners. Those fine tuners are for small adjustments. So if your string is just a little bit out of tune, let's say you're on the A string and it's just a little bit flat or a little bit sharp, but it's still an A, we're gonna use these fine tuners to tune it. But if your A string is on the wrong note, let's say it's on like a G or an F, and it's really out of tune, we're gonna use the pegs up here at the top. Those are our bigger tuners. Those are the easiest way to break a string on your violin, so make sure you don't mess with them until you watch the video on how to use the pegs. This part here is called the peg box. It holds the pegs. And then this part here, the black part, is the fingerboard. That's where your fingers go. And a very essential part to the violin, most people don't realize, but this is an extra part. Up on the top here, it looks like it's part of the fingerboard, but it sets above. It's called the nut. If the strings are not up on the nut, then they will sit straight on the fingerboard, which definitely makes it sound squeaky, which we don't want. The top part here is called the scroll. It's the artist twirl. You can tell a maker's artistry by the scroll. A lot of times you can tell a very basic beginner cheap violin because it doesn't have as many twirls on the scroll or the scroll might be big and clunky. Some artists actually carve birds or people or fun things into the top of the scroll. Now, as we come down to the bottom of the violin, there aren't too many more parts. There's a chin rest on the top where we'll place our jaw, and there's an end button with a tail gut. This part is one of the cheapest parts on the violin. The tail gut is pretty inexpensive, but they do tend to break if you have a really old violin. If it breaks, it looks pretty scary because most of the parts come off the violin, but remember it's a simple fix. You get a new tail gut and you're good to go. One other thing that can happen pretty easily is sometimes in dry weather, the fingerboard will pop off of your violin. If that happens, it's just secured with a small spot of glue, so you can take it in and have um, a maker or a luthier a repairman put a spot of glue back on and you can get your fingerboard back on. Do watch when you get a violin to make sure that the neck is connected, that it's not, sometimes you'll notice that a violin might have this part, the fingerboard, way up high, or the strings might be way off of the fingerboard or right down touching it. We want just a little bit of space between the strings and the fingerboard, like this. If you have much more than half a centimeter, quarter of a centimeter between the string and the fingerboard, that's too much down at the bottom. It's of course gonna be a little closer here at the top. So those are things to look for. Okay, those are the parts of your violin.